possible solar flare CME will be Earth-directed. Over the past three days, Sunspot AR2740 has spit out numerous CMEs towards us. But uh, thank goodness none were Earth-directed. This is from Space Weather Today, May 7. The faint halo CME that left the sun during the early hours of May 7th might have an Earth-directed component. This is what NOAA analysts are saying. And they're modeling the storm cloud uh, now, so we have to stay tuned. Now, uh, this is solar wind speed, 341.5 kilometers per second. Density is 9.8 protons per cubic centimeter. X-ray solar flares, 6-hour maximum is B2, 24-hour is C1. Now, what is a halo CME? Coronal mass ejections and halo events. Coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, are gigantic bubbles of electrified gas that billow away from the sun. They can carry as much as 10 billion tons of solar material and trigger spectacular geomagnetic storms if they hit the Earth's magnetosphere. CMEs, which usually travel at speeds between 500 and 1,500 kilometers per second, take two or three days to cross the 150 million kilometer divide, that's about 93 million miles, separating the Sun and the Earth. CMEs aimed at Earth are called halo events because of the way they look in coronagraph images. As the expanding cloud of the Earth, an Earth-directed CME looms larger and larger, it appears to envelop the Sun, forming a halo around our star. This animation here, if you click on uh, the uh, halo events, you can see the coronal mass ejection recorded by SOHO, coronography, July 14, 2000, the many spectacles in the latter half of the movie are energetic particles from a related solar flare bombarding SOHO's electronic detectors. It looks like snow on the image. So that's the halo event. Rare solar radio burst last month. Sunspot AR2740 strafed Earth with loud shortwave radio bursts and is doing it again. Yesterday, May 6, was an incredible day of strong solar radio bursts, including one of the strongest of the current solar cycle. This is uh, reports uh, by Thomas Ashcraft, who recorded the outburst with a shortwave radio telescope in New Mexico. And you can click on the link on the article to hear that as well. They allow dripping static and towards drifting feathers. He says, this one really rips. I, re I recommend listening with headphones. It's a stereo recording, 20 megahertz in one channel, 25 megahertz in the other. So how does a sunspot make radio waves? It starts with a solar flare. Beams of electrons accelerate by flares, slice through the sun's atmosphere, creating a ripple of plasma waves and radio static detectable on Earth, 93 million miles away from the sun. Astronomers classify solar radio bursts into five types. Ashcraft recording capture a mixture of type 3 and type 4. So what are these five types of uh, solar radio bursts? For us who don't know, I don't even know. There's a, You can click on that. There's a PDF that you can uh, see, and it's uh, five types. We said three and four. Let's read that. Characteristics, fast frequency drift bursts can occur singularly only in groups or storms. And number four is broadband continuum with fine structure. Number three, single bursts last from one to three seconds, or group one is five minutes, storm minutes to hours, and group four, that it said we have three or four, can last for hours or for days. Associated phenomena in group four are flares and proton emissions. Group three are active regions and flares, basically in the... In a, in a quick brief of what these uh, radio bursts, solar radio bursts are. Now, the uh, solar flare movie, you can see here, click on that, and you can see the sunspot AR2740 producing a strongest solar flare in more than a year. 
an M-class 1 eruption. Extreme ultraviolet telescopes on board NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory recorded the must-see move of the blast. The brief flash of UV radiation from this flare ionized the top of Earth's atmosphere, producing a brownout of some shortwave radio signals over Asia and also the Indian Pacific. Frequencies affected were mainly below 20 MHz, and ships at sea and ham radio operators may have noticed a disturbance on Monday, May 6th, around 5.10 UT. The movie also shows a filament of matter racing away from the explosion. This formed the core of a coronal mass ejection, CME, which, according to NOAA, and analysis, will not hit the Earth. So it's not aimed at us. Uh, what, what the fire, the Sky Fireball Network, we had a May 7th network reported 32 fireballs aimed towards Earth. Every night, a network of NASA all-sky cameras scans the sky above the United States for meteoric fireballs. Automated software maintained by NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office calculates their orbits, velocity, penetration depth in Earth's atmosphere, and many other characteristics. And daily results are presented here on Space Weather. And now there are 1,980 1, potential hazardous asteroids on May 8th, 2019. Uh, the next one would be May 17th. It will be coming at a, a distance of uh, 4.2 lunar distances. Now the cosmic rays in the atmosphere, we know that they, the higher you fly into the uh, atmosphere, the more doses you get. Uh, and there's also the longer time you're up there, again, the more dose that you, of radiation you will get. The, to measure the radiation on airplanes, they use the same sensors that fly to the stratosphere on board Earth and Sky calculus cosmic ray balloons, neutron bubble chambers, and X-ray gamma ray Geiger tubes sensitive to energies between 10 keV and 20 MeV. And these energies span the range of medical X-ray machines and airport security scanners. Space weather balloon once a week. Space weather and students from Earth and Sky calculus fly space weather balloons in the stratosphere over California. And the balloons are equipped with radiation sensors that detect cosmic rays. It's a surprising down-to-earth form of space weather. And cosmic rays can see clouds, trigger lightning. They can seed clouds, yes. Cosmic rays can seed clouds, trigger lightning, and penetrate commercial airplanes. Also, there are studies linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias and sudden even cardiac death in the general population. Can you imagine? Our latest measurements show that cosmic rays are intensifying with an increase of more than 18% since four years ago, since 2015. They have increased, cosmic rays have increased 18%. That's almost a fifth in four years. The data points to the graph corresponding to the peak of Ranger Fodser Maximum, which lies about 67,000 feet above central California. And when cosmic rays crash into Earth's atmosphere, they produce a spray of secondary particles that is most intense at the entrance to the stratosphere. Physicists Eric Ranniger and George Fodser discovered the maximum using balloons in the 1930s, and it is what we are measuring today as well. The radiation sensors on board the helium balloons detect X-rays and gamma rays in the energy range from 10 keV to 20 MeV, and the energy span the range of medical X-ray machines and airport security scanners. Now, why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds, such as coronal mass ejection, CMEs, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass the Earth. During solar maximum, CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But now, when we are entering the solar minimum, the solar cycle swinging towards minimum, allowing cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be the weakening 
our Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from deep space radiation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.